long tonight, but I do want to share with you the word of the Lord that the Lord has placed in our hearts for this evening. If you have your Bibles with you, Joshua chapter number six is where we're going to begin our time together this evening. Uh, I'm, I'm thankful for what the Lord is doing. Um, I'm thankful for the revelation by the Holy Spirit that God is bringing to his people during this time. Uh, but this morning, I, I pray that you did not just hear me, but I pray this morning that you heard the heart of God this morning. I pray that you heard the Holy Spirit speaking. For those of you that was in the house with us this morning, I do believe sincerely that we are in an hour where there must be a an infusion of men and women that are willing to stand up and be counted during this time. We need courageous men and women uh, in the body of Christ uh, across the globe. And I'm thankful that we do have that, but how many knows we need that on a much greater scale than what we have currently. Uh, so I, I believe that there needs to be an awakening within the body of Christ. Uh, and uh, I'm not talking about just in the platforms of the American church, but I'm talking about even within the pews of the American church. You and I make up the body of Christ. It does not matter what our position or our title is. It doesn't matter what our primary gifting is or what we, how we operate in the fivefold ministry. It, all of those things are important, but we are the body of Christ. And how many knows that we need the whole body to be courageous in this time and in this season? We must stand up and we must defend uh, and contend for the faith because how many knows that we're living in an evil world? And as we was ministering this morning, we find that even today, you know, our nation is in a very, a very uncertain place, probably more uncertain than many realize today. There is, and this is not a political statement at all, but we are a nation without any type of leadership at the moment. And the world knows it. And while we were sitting in a place of comfort today, our young service men and women was in harm's way in the Red Sea amongst many other people under great attack. And probably we will not get the truth of exactly how intense that attack is unless we go to other sources. And can I tell you, we must awaken and realize that there has to be the sounding of the alarm, but there also has to be men and women that once again will stand and proclaim that Jesus Christ is Lord because he is our answer tonight. Amen. So tonight we're just going to kind of do a continuation, maybe if you will, of this morning. Uh, but I, if the Lord would help me for a few moments, I want to talk to you and show you the difference uh, that it's not just as it's always been. And I, I'm going to try to stay focused tonight. I do feel like over the last 24 hours that the Lord has really began to deposit some things prophetically into my spirit. I don't feel a, re a release to share that tonight. I don't call myself a prophet by any stretch of the imagination, but I do know that when God begins to prophetically speak to me, and uh, so I'm just going to try not to get too far off track tonight, but I want to talk to you for a little bit today on not just any shout, not just any shout. There's, there's a distinction in the midst of different sounds that we hear. And I want to take you to a very familiar story, probably for most of you uh, in this room. In Joshua chapter number six, going to read the first five verses to you this evening, and then we'll read verse 15 and 16 as well. And then I'll jump down and read verse number 20 for a foundation this evening. Now Jericho was straightly shut up because of the children of Israel. None went out and none came in. And the Lord said unto Joshua, See, I have given into thy hand Jericho, and the king thereof, and the mighty men of valor. And you shall compass the city, all ye men of war, and go round about the city once. Thus shalt thou do six days. And seven priests shall bear before the ark seven trumpets of ram's horn. And seventh, on, on the seventh day you shall compass the city seven times, and the priests shall blow with the trumpets. And it shall come to pass that when they make a long blast with the ram's horn, and when you hear the sound of the trumpet, all the people shall shout with a great shout. And the wall of the city shall fall down flat, and the people shall ascend up every man straight before him, verse number 15. 
And it come to pass on the seventh day that they rose early about the dawning of the day and compassed the city after the same manner seven times. Only on that day they compassed the city seven times and it come to pass at the seventh time when the priests blew with the trumpets, Joshua said unto the people, Shout, for the Lord hath given you the city. Verse number 20. So the people shouted when the priests blew with the trumpets, and it come to pass when the people heard the sound of the trumpet, and the people shouted with a great shout that the wall fell down flat, so that the people went up into the city, every man straight before him, and they took the city. Tell your neighbors, say they took the city. All right, let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we love you tonight. We thank you for your word. I pray for a fresh anointing as we deliver to your precious people tonight that which you've birthed in our hearts. And Lord, we pray that we would decrease and that you would increase. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Thank you for honoring the word of the Lord this evening. In this biblical account, we see the unexplainable take place. The city that was thought to be unable to be penetrated, a fortress, if you will, began to be overran by simply a group of unarmed individuals that was following after the Ark of the Covenant. We find that these individuals simply walked in a manner of obedience, and at a specific time, they simply shouted with a great shout. Was it, the question has to be asked, was it called, what really caused the walls to crumble? Was it our men to, that was present in front of the ark, or was it just the ark itself, or was it the people following? There's many questions that men could ask concerning this event. But we have to really pause and look at the full context of it and ask this question. What really caused those walls to fall? What caused mighty men to shriek back in fear? What caused the city to really be destroyed? Was it mere the volume of a combination of voices that was a, released at a specific time in a specific moment? Or was there something else present that day that could not be seen by the human eye? Notice with me, we see a body of people marching towards the promise that was given to their fathers. They have crossed over the Jordan River on on dry ground and they had just witnessed an unexplainable event that had awakened something inside of them. Now, let me back up just for a moment and let's recap the story. If we go back to where we was this morning in Deuteronomy 31, you find that Moses is standing before the children of Israel and he simply says this, I'm 120 years old this day and the Lord says, I'm not going over this Jordan. Therefore, he says to tell you that he's going to be with you. He's going to dispel everyone that stands in front of you. And you are going to take the promise of your fathers. But by the way, there is going to be one by the name of Joshua. Here he is. And he is going to cause you to inherit uh, the promises of your father. Now, we find after the corporate assignment was given or proclamation, he then calls Joshua forward and he speaks to him personally in the presence of the people and he simply tells them tells him I need you to be strong I need you to be very courageous I need you to be of good courage because you are going to affect what is getting ready to happen in the future so we find that shortly after that Moses is removed from the landscape he is no longer present we know this according to Joshua chapter 1 that Joshua and the people of God are in a state of mourning they're simply not knowing really what to do because their leader is now uh, uh, removed from the landscape. But now the word of the Lord in Joshua chapter 1 comes and says, listen, as I was with Moses, so will I be with you. Every place you put the foot of your, your soul sets, uh, I will give to you. The ground is yours. Uh, everything from this place to this place, all the way down to the great river, the Euphrates, it's all yours. Nothing is going to be able to stand with you, but I need you to be strong uh, and I need you to be of good courage because uh, you're getting ready to cause people uh, to 
to experience the promises that I've given to their fathers. Uh, and can I tell you, as you get over into Joshua chapter 2, uh, you'll find that he sends people out to begin to look at, uh, at the land. You find Genesis or jo- jo- uh, Joshua chapter 3, you find that they come to the Jordan River. You find things begin to escalate very quickly. But the Lord begins to speak in this manner. And he says, listen, I want you to go out and tell them that they've never passed this way before. Uh, they're going to have to walk and they're going to have to move in a manner that, I, that I'm going to instruct you. I need you uh, to get people ready. They need to sanctify themselves because uh, there's something getting ready to take place that has not yet taken place on this journey. And now we find that when you start looking through the first few chapters of the book of Joshua, you come to Joshua chapter 3, uh, and it says this in chapter 3, verse 14 through 17. It says, And it come to pass uh, when the people remove from their tents to pass over Jordan, that the priests bearing the ark of the covenant before the people, and as they that bear the ark were coming to Jordan, and the feet of the priests that bear the ark were dipped in the brim of the water, for Jordan overfloweth all his banks at the time of harvest. Uh, notice this in verse 16, that the waters which came down from above and rose up upon a heap very far from the city of Adam. Notice, it is then that you find that the people passed over right against Jericho, a great walled city, a fortress, something that man would say was not able to be penetrated, uh, was not able to be overcome. Uh, There is many different ideals about it, but when you start looking at the historical context of it, there is some people that say that they had walls that was at least 28 feet tall. Uh, Some say it could have been taller in areas. Uh, Some say uh, that it was 12 foot wide at the bottom. They said it had two walls on it. The walls were so wide around Jericho that you could ride a a chariot and horses could run around the top of it. Uh, It was not able to be penetrated. And we find that the word of the Lord brings us to a place where he's taking the children of Israel uh, and brings them across the Jordan uh, in a supernatural manner, uh, but they're right up against the city of Jericho. Can I tell you, every time you get ready to step into a place of promise, uh, the enemy will always have an obstacle to try to deter deter you and keep you uh, from where God has you ordained to be. Uh, And you find that when you begin to walk through this passage of scripture, uh, the people passed over over right against Jericho, but you got to realize uh, that the priest stood firm on dry ground uh, and the people crossed over. Uh, now, what does this really mean? Uh, you have to realize uh, from Deuteronomy 31 uh, all the way through Joshua chapter 1, chapter 2, and chapter 3, uh, they have not seen anything to really be excited about. Uh, the promise uh, that they have been trusting in seems like it's just dormant. Uh, there's, no, there's no revival fires happening. Uh, Nobody's shaking a tambourine saying that the horse and the rider is uh, no longer going to come up out of the water. Uh, Everything is just kind of mundane. It's just kind of blah. What are we going to do now? Moses is not here. Uh, This young guy, this young whippersnapper is going to take us into some place. What's really going to happen? Is God really going to be with him like he was with Moses? Uh, Will there be water come from a rock? Uh, Will there be manna that comes? Uh, How are we going to live? All this stuff's going on in the natural, uh, but we find that in this moment, in Joshua chapter 3, uh, they walk down, they see the priest bear the ark like they're instructed to, uh, the Jordan River is overflowing its banks, uh, and all of a sudden, these men of God step in, uh, and the waters stand up on a heap, uh, and they're able to stand on dry ground, and all of a sudden, uh, Israel begins to cross over, uh, something begins to happen, yeah? listen, I'm not talking about five people crossing over. We're talking over a million people. Uh, Some say it could be upwards to over like two million. Uh, We find that they begin to cross over. Uh, We find that this water is a wall on each side. Uh, All of a sudden, uh, something begins to awaken. Uh, You must remember up to this point, uh, they had been in a state of mourning. Uh, Moses was removed. Uh, Joshua had been chosen and they had heard the affirmation, uh, but yet they had not witnessed the hand of God uh, in operation on the leadership of Joshua at this time. Uh, But now uh, they have saw the Lord move on their behalf. uh, And now they have a reason to believe once again. Uh, And in the midst of one of the darkest times uh, for them, God come to them and showed himself mighty on their behalf. But now here they are. 
They're on the outside of Jericho, which brings me back to that which was released in Joshua chapter number six. The decision to walk in obedience at this time began to awaken and set in motion something that oftentimes we overlook when we're talking about this particular event. We find that the instruction is very clear. For the sake of time, we can't really dive into chapter number five, but you will find that the Lord visits Joshua in chapter number five and begins to speak to him, begins to reveal some things to him. He simply asks, he says, are you for us? Are you against us? When he sees this figure and all of a sudden, God begins to have conversation. And then chapter number six, he said, listen, you're going to do something that makes no sense in the natural. Once a day for the first six days, you're going to walk around this city. You're going to walk in a certain manner and you're going to remain silent. But on the seventh day, you're going to do it seven times. And at the designated time, there will be a long blast from the ram's horn. And there will be a great shout that comes up out of the people. This is going to call something to change. This moment of time, they chose to be obedient to what the Lord was speaking, even though they did not understand it. And their obedience began to awaken a measure of faith that is inside of every man. So I go back to the question and say, was it the mere volume of voices that caused the wall to fall? Can I tell you the volume of voices had nothing to do with it? But it was the obedience of men that began to awaken a measure of faith. And can I tell you, it was faith in that moment that caused a generation to begin to step into their promise. You say, what does that have to do with us today? In that moment, that which was unable to be penetrated began to crumble due to the release of a shout that was filled with faith. I want to ask you a question tonight. What is that unmovable thing in your life? What is that generational curse in your family? What is that thing that's overshadowing your nation or your community or your state? What is that demonic spiritual force that has just dominated whatever's going on in your life? And it says, and it actually even taunts you much like a Goliath spirit that simply says, who do you think you are that you can come and stand in front of me? Can I tell you tonight, it was in that moment that a shout filled with faith changed everything. It wasn't just an ordinary shout. One may ask, how do you know it was a shout filled with faith? It's not my opinion, but it is what the word of the Lord says. In Hebrews chapter 11 and verse number 30, it simply says this, by faith, the walls of Jericho fell down. And after they were compassed about seven days, notice with me, the writer specifically writes in this manner, I truly believe because saying this, it was by faith that made the walls fall, but the faith did not do what it was going to do until there was a place or there was a period of obedience because they did it for seven days. Can I tell you, if you and I are going to ever step into the place that God has for us in this season of our life, we are going to have to come back to where we are an obedient people. Because it is obedience that awakens the measure of faith that has been given to every man. It's not enough to say, I believe, but can I tell you, it is men and women that begins to operate and live in that, man, in that vein of faith. Notice with me, you find in Hebrews, uh, the, the writer of, of Hebrews chapter 11, we know it's the faith chapter, but it's not just verse number 30. But if you can continue to read on verse 31 through 35, it's kind of ironic. It says, by, the fa by faith, the walls of Jericho fell and after that, after they were compassed about seven days. In the very next verse, it seems like it's totally random, but it isn't. It simply says, and by faith, the harlot Rahab perished not with them that believed not. And when she had received uh, the, the men of God, uh, noted the spies with peace. And then it goes on to say, and what shall I more say for the time would fail me to tell you. He said, I would love to take the time to write in detail and tell you about Gideon or Barak uh, or Samson uh, or David or Samuel or of the prophets. Uh, but notice in verse 33, it says, who through faith uh, subdued kingdoms, uh, they 
wrought righteousness. They obtained promises. Uh, they stopped the mouths of lions. They quenched the violence of fire. Uh, they escaped the edge of the sword. Uh, out of weakness, they were made strong. Uh, they waxed violent in fight. Uh, they turned uh, to fight the, the fight the enemies of aliens. And what they're saying is this. Everything that has ever been recorded throughout the pages of the Bible uh, was done uh, by faith. Uh, and can I tell you, I must remind us today uh, that faith released uh, is a faith that touches the heart of God. Uh, I want to say that again. Uh, you can sit there and say, I believe, I believe, I believe, uh, but it doesn't matter. Uh, what matters is that you release that faith. Uh, you say, what are you talking about? Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for uh, and the evidence of things not seen. Uh, but without faith, in Hebrews eleven six 6 tells us, uh, it is impossible to please him, uh, for he that cometh to God must believe that he is God. Uh, I want to ask, do you really believe him? Uh, if you really believe who he is, uh, we will not be cowering down to the things of this world, uh, but we will stand up uh, and we will be men and women that are full of courage and strength. Uh, and tonight, I need you to understand with me uh, that this is not something that we can pass over. Uh, the very first word of the gospel is repentance, uh, but the very thing that is follows that is the word believe. Uh, can I tell you, when men and women began to believe that God is who he says he is, uh, they began to awaken and walk in a measure of faith that's been placed in them. Uh, and when we do that, uh, we find that faith begins to take us into a place uh, where we walk into the promises of God and the provision of God and the blessings of God uh, and the anointing of God. Uh, no, hear me tonight. Uh, there is only one source for true biblical faith, uh, and that is the Word of God. Uh, can I tell you, when you take the Word out of your life, uh, you're not going to have much faith. Uh, but when a man or a woman begins to intentionally put the Word of God in their life, uh, there will begin to be an awakening of a measure of faith. Uh, and when that faith is present, uh, it does not matter how big your Jericho is. Uh, it doesn't matter how much a man has invested in it. Uh, can I tell you, there is a shout that begins to rise up out of a man or a woman, uh, and that shout begins to change the dynamics of everything. Uh, I am grateful that there has been men that's came before us uh, that was men and women that was filled with faith uh, because their shout was not just a shout of emotion. Uh, it was not just a shout to get somebody to move, uh, but it was a shout uh, that was filled with faith. And because faith was present, uh, you and I are present today. Uh, let me give you this real quick uh, this evening. Uh, and I won't even charge you for it at all. Uh, you will find this uh, to be very true. Uh, one generation's devotion to God uh, does not secure the next generation's devotion to God. Uh, but one generation can leave a legacy of godliness uh, which clearly points the way to what a life of faith should be. Uh, then making it attractive to others. Uh, I want to ask the question, how attractive uh, are you to a generation? Uh, why is it uh, that somebody would want to be uh, a Christian like you? Uh, do they see you down and depressed and disgusted? Uh, or do they see you walking with the power and the anointing of God? Uh, when was somebody uh, was present in your family, seen you take anointing oil, uh, slap it on the head of somebody that was sick, uh, and they be recovered in a moment of time. Uh, can I tell you, that becomes attractive. Uh, when was the last time that you was in the house of God uh, and the sinner was present in the room uh, and they had to run to the altar because of the convicting power of God, uh, because the faith was in the room that says you got to do uh, what the word says to do. Uh, listen, uh, I'm thankful for the shout, uh, but I don't want just any shout. Uh, I don't want a shout of religion, uh, but I want a shout of faith to arise in our nation uh, where one once again, uh, it begins to cause strongholds to crumble this evening. Not just any shout, but a shout of faith. Notice with me, you find Romans chapter 12, verse number 3. Paul's writing, he says, For I say through the grace given unto me to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly according as God hath dealt to every man the measure of faith. There's a measure of faith in you. And that measure of faith has the ability to make the walls of Jericho fall. But the question is, what are you doing with it? What am I doing with it? Now, 
As I said just a moment ago, the only source of true biblical faith is the Word of God. Let me slow down just for a moment. There are two different Greek words translated for the Word of God. We have know this according to John chapter 1, verse number 1. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God and the Word was God. We remember that verse, I hope. We know that we're talking that there, that Word of God. When we're talking about John chapter 1, verse number 1, we're talking about the Logos Word. It is the written Word of God. The written Word of God is this right here. This is the Logos Word of God. It is written. It is full of power. It is full of authority. But there is also another Greek word that is used for the Word of God, and that is this. It is, uh, it, it, we find that faith comes by hearing the Word. This is talking about the rhema Word of God. Now, what is the rhema Word of God? The rhema Word of God is not a separate word, but the rhema Word of God is when the Holy Spirit breathes on this Word, whether it's preached or whether it's read, and the Holy Spirit is breathing on this Word in a moment of time, and this written Word becomes a rhema Word because it's alive. Now, in both of those incidents, we find that this is what awakens the faith or the measure of faith inside of man. And I've heard people say, well, I wish I had faith like brother so-and-so. Well, have you been in the word like brother so-and-so? Here's what I, I will say from my personal experience. The men and women that I have known that have been used in the miraculous would often be labeled as a little odd or a little weird by the world. But it was men or women that give themselves of much to the Word of God because they was not cast about by the cares of the world but they was drawn to this word in such a manner that this written word the logos word began to be breathed on by the Holy Spirit in such a manner in their life but the written word begins to become the rhema word and through this Logos and rhema word that's been deposited in their life, this measure of faith not only begins to awaken, but it begins to grow. It begins to be breathed on in such a manner that it begins to, you, you say, what are you talking about? Notice with me, there is different levels of faith that you and I can operate in. Throughout scripture, we find Matthew 6.30 talks about little faith. Matthew 8 and 10 talks about great faith. Uh, James chapter 2, I believe verse 22 talks about perfect faith. Uh, 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 13 verse 2 talks about all faith. Listen. All I know is this, God gives to every believer the measure of faith that is required for us to walk in victory and to obtain promises. But you and I cannot operate in the realm that God desires for us to operate in unless, first of all, there is faith present. You can shout all you want to, but if there's no faith in that shout, the devil going to sit there and laugh at you. Please hear me. Remember what happened to the sons of Sceva? Paul we know. Jesus we know. But who are you? There is something about a sound that is released with faith. You and I today need to understand that we are in a world that is filled with noise. And sometimes my world has too much noise in it for my liking. But there's sometimes that penetrates through that noise. You know instantly when you hear it that that's not just any noise, but God's speaking. God is saying something. I have to focus. What is he saying? Why is it? Why is that able to happen? Whether it be through a song, whether it be through a message, whether it be whatever, you find that there's something that penetrates the airway and it begins to speak not just to your ears, but it, designate, it resonates in your spirit, man. And that is because it's been released with a shout of faith. Can I tell you, we need to be hearing what the faith is saying in this time. The rhema is the result of the Holy Spirit causing the Bible to come alive to us personally. And the result of this is an increase in faith. Right now, I'm thankful 
that you have a testimony that, well, God saved me in 1950. That's wonderful. But how awakened is your faith in 2023? I'm not concerned about yesterday's manna. I'm thankful for the revivals of yesterday, but notice with me, the manner in which Abraham manifested faith is something all of us can learn from. Don't have time to get into his story tonight, but we know this, that when Abraham began to hear the word of the Lord, it changed everything. Notice, uh, in the manner in which he manifested faith, he heard the word, he hoped concerning the future regarding the word, he then referred to and he accepted the evidence, not of his senses, but that which the Lord has said. How many knows that your five senses can get you in trouble real fast? Listen, there is a great absence within the body of Christ today. And one of the reasons why we need a fresh outpouring of the Holy Spirit is not for a physical service or an emotional service, but is so that there can be the gift of discernment and operation again in the lives of men and women where we can discern that which is of God and that which is not of God. Because can I remind you today that in the last days there will be seducing spirits and doctrines of devil that even the elect would be very deceived is what the Bible tells us. Listen, if you're letting your emotions and your senses dictate what's spiritual and what's not, God help you. But there's a measure of faith inside of you. And can I tell you, when you go back to Joshua chapter 6 and you slow down and you really walk through this story, you begin to find that in this time, it began to be not a mind issue, but it become a heart issue. And I want to say this tonight, scriptural faith is a condition of the heart, not of the mind. The children of Israel at that point had to stop, they had to self-examine, and they had to look at their heart, and they simply had to do this. Are we going to trust what our senses is telling us? Because this, this city that is not able to be penetrated is right in front of us, and it's standing in between us and the promise. We can't do that. Are we're going to have to go back and know that the Lord said, even though Moses isn't with us, that Joshua's present, and God's going to use him, and he's going to lead us, he's going to guide us, and he's going to take us into the place of the promise that the Lord has said for us. And therefore, God says that we're to walk around this thing. It's the worst battle plan you could ever read of in history. I want you to walk around this city, blow a few horns, Knowing this, that inside the city on the other side of the walls is some armed men, mighty men of valor, not able to be penetrated. They had the greatest spot to defend themselves, but we're just going to walk around it and not say anything for six days. But then on the seventh day, they want us to shout. That this is a heart issue. This isn't a mind issue. But notice what happens because of their obedience of saying we're going to trust in God. Something began to happen inside of every man every woman and when they heard Joshua simply say shout with a great shout there was a release in that moment that changed everything see what they did not understand if you began to read the very first verses of chapter number five that it was noised inside the city amongst everybody do you realize what just happened? The children of Israel was on the other side of the Jordan, but all of a sudden, the priest took the ark, which is symbolic of the presence of the Lord, and they stepped down in that old muddy Jordan River, and the river parted. It stood up on a heap, and they walked over. Now they're right outside our walls. And it says this, that it took the fight right out of their enemy. And it simply said that there was no fight left in them whatsoever. And it was all because a group of people decided to obey the word of the Lord even when they didn't understand it. I'll confess to you tonight, I don't understand it all, but I choose to believe it all. 
There's another man in history that found himself in a great struggle. I've shared his story before, but I'm going to share it in closing tonight to show you how powerful this can become. If you have read any at all concerning the late Billy Graham, early in his ministry, his ministry partner, they had traveled the world together. And they was experiencing some wonderful things. But then his ministry partner begins to combat him and simply says, Billy, I don't really believe the Bible to be true. And if you listen to his story, you will find that he denounced his faith and he tried to make a laughing stock out of Billy Graham. And Billy and him had ministered together in many, many places. And Billy loved him and was a dear friend to him. But when that man began to leave this life in a very dramatic manner, he wept and cried because of the decision that he made to walk away from the Lord. But Billy, during that time, found himself in the woods, kneeling in an old tree stump with his Bible. That's all he had. And he was really struggling, trying to figure this thing out as a young man. And finally, he took his Bible and he laid it on the tree stump and he said, Lord, I don't understand it all, but I'm going to choose to believe it all. And because in that moment he chose to be obedient to the Word of God, even when he did not fully understand it, he will docu- it was documented that it was in that moment that there began to be a great anointing that began to rest upon him. And as he began to minister, thousands upon thousands began to give their heart to the Lord. He didn't change his style. He didn't do some new thing. But it was the simple fact in that moment when he said, I'm going to choose to obey you when I don't even understand it. There was a measure of faith that awakened inside of him. And he began to operate in a realm. And when he spoke, don't miss this, when he spoke, there was a sound of faith that was penetrating and walls began to fall. If I take you back to the story this morning of R.W. Shambach, he preached for two hours, gave everything he had and nobody responded. But then when he called three people up and he simply let the Lord begin to do the work and all of a sudden 50,000 began to run and say Jesus is alive because they saw it in action. Can I tell you, he didn't know what was going to happen. He just chose to obey the Lord. And when he chose to obey the Lord, there was an awakening and a measure of faith that came alive. And therefore, when he began to speak, it wasn't just mere words. It wasn't just a shout, but there was faith. And therefore... Walls crumbled. The children of Israel ascended straight forward and they conquered a city because it wasn't just any shout. Please hear me tonight. I don't want just any shout. But I want a shout of faith. It's gotten real popular. They want to come to the music tonight. It's gotten real popular in our circles of church fellowship. And we've done it so long that we've gotten good at what we do. I was given this story some time ago by somebody that was very close to me and this happened and I tell you how long this has been going on. This hasn't just been happening over the last five years, ten years, but this was probably 45 years ago. There was a seasoned preacher. Had a couple young preachers in the car with him. And they was going because he had been invited to preach on the drive over. This is what he said. He said, boys, I'm going to show you something tonight. He said, I want you to watch and I want you to learn. He said, we're going to get over here tonight. And he said, these people, they really like to worship the Lord. And he said, but I'm going to preach on a hamburger tonight. And he said, I'm going to have them shouting. And I'm not going to use one Bible verse. 
They thought he was joking. Many of you would know this man. He walked into the platform. People had been doing church. He began to talk about a hamburger and people began to shout. The Bible wasn't used. The proclamation of Jesus wasn't used. The people walked out of there thinking they had been in the presence of God. I'm going to tell you something. That kind of shout has no power, has no authority, has no ability to set anybody free. But the problem is today we'll get more excited about a hamburger than we will about the Word of God. And then we wonder why our children are bound. We wonder why our nation's been overran. We wonder why the house of God is empty and lights are out and the doors are locked on a Sunday evening because we can't get nobody to come to church on Sunday night is what every pastor tells me everywhere I go. The reality of our day is this. We could probably close. We could close the churches in America. We kind of did a, an experience of that just over the last few years, and it seems like it didn't really change too much. Everybody kept going on, doing their thing. Because much as what's been produced in the house of God is, is just a shout, a shout of emotion, a shout of religion. It's not a shout of power. It's not a shout of authority. I know it sounds critical, and I don't mean to be critical. Because I I believe there's emotions. I believe there should be uh, aspiration to be in the presence of God. But listen, i I, got to tell you something. Much of what we call worship and much of what we call of honoring God is not honoring God at all. But we've gotten so used and accustomed to the shouts that men have created that we think that's the anointing of God. And I'm going to tell you something. When there's a shout of faith, the enemy won't still be standing in front of you. It will be crumbled before you. When there is a shout of faith, your children will walk in deliverance. When there's a shout of faith, your community will be changed. When there's a shout of faith, there will be a breaking of generational curses. Now, people will look at me and say, oh, yeah, that's just not, I just don't know how you, listen, I'm going to tell you tonight, I go back to Hebrews 11.30, it was by faith the walls of Jericho fell. If you want the strongholds of this hour to be broken, there has to be a shout of faith come up out of somebody, and the question is, where does it come from? It's not going to come from the world. But what does God choose to use? Ever since he ascended, Christ ascended into the portals of heaven and the Holy Spirit was released and came down, he has chose to use the church of Jesus Christ. And that is where the shout must come from. Listen, I appreciate my heritage. I will not speak ill of it and I'm thankful for those that have paved the way for us to be here today. And I'm going to tell you something. The reason that Brother Dalton was able to lay hands on my older brother when he was diagnosed, and they said, take him home and enjoy him. But when he laid his hands upon him and he was healed in a moment of time, I'll tell you why he was able to do that was because it wasn't just any shout that penetrated the airways, but it was a shout of faith. Why is it that Sister Bernie Grant could sing Amazing Grace and all of a sudden the whole atmosphere of the room changed? It was because it was a sound of faith. Why is it that those that was before us could begin to move? Uh, They wasn't the most polished. uh, They wasn't the most popular. But can I tell you, when the Spirit of God began to move on them, the atmosphere changed uh, because it wasn't just a natural voice, uh, but there was something in that voice. uh, And it was a shout of faith that was coming up out of them from the measure of faith that God put in them. And we find uh, that demons had to flee because uh, there was something more powerful standing in front of them God help us today 
God, help us today to get positioned to where that measure of faith that God has put in us uh, kind of begins to come out of us, uh, where it says it's not just any song, uh, it's not just any message, uh, it's not just another Sunday night service, uh, but there's something penetrating in the airways uh, that begins to make things change. Uh, can I tell you today, we need a revival, but it will not come until there is a shout of faith released out of the church. But that faith will never be awakened unless we come back to this, my friend. We say we have no time because our life is so demanding. But if you're not careful, your little notification on your smartphone will probably say that your average screen time this past week was 3.4 hours. Or it was 4.5 hours, or it was 6.7 hours. But I don't have time. I'm going to tell you something. We are wasting time. We are wasting so much time. I'm thankful that she looks all so beautiful, even though she's been through 15 different filters before she ever got to the, to the post. And listen, I'm thankful that he has been so blessed. And listen, I, I, listen I, I, I'm just telling you, can I tell you, you can spend all of your time comparing. You, you, you can spend all of your time saying, oh, I, if I just had what they, listen, none of that junk matters. What matters is that there's a shout of faith that comes up out of us where there begins to be a release because there's some promises that we've not yet obtained. In the last days, the Spirit of the Lord will be poured out in such a manner that your sons and daughters that's not futuristic. We should be living in that right now. That's not just for your children and your children's children. But I have to tell you, you're sons and daughters. So why are you not operating? Why am I not operating in the level that God says we can be operating in? Please hear me. There's a shout. Oh, in Joshua chapter 6, if you could hear it. The ram horns are blasting. All of a sudden, there was a shout that came up out of this people that began to cause a shaking, a shifting of even the things that the natural hands of man had built and began to crumble. And there began to be men and women that had heard about it all of their life began to put their feet down in the promise that they had heard forever. Some of you have heard so much for so long. You say, well, I just don't know if I'll ever see it. Can I tell you? We're on the brink of getting ready to step into some promises. But we have to awaken. And the only source for this measure of faith to flow in the manner that it needs to is if we come back to the Word of God. We need the Logos Word. And we need the Rhema Word of God. Not just on Sunday, but every day of our life. As we stand all over the house this evening, there's so much more I could say. I feel like I've said enough. If you hear nothing that I've heard tonight, please hear this. It's time for you and I as men and women of God to call out to the measure of faith inside of us and refuse to allow the enemy to walk in and out of our lives without any resistance any longer. For when a man or a woman will awaken, well, they will embrace that which the Lord is speaking concerning them. There can be a change. And there can be a shift in a moment of time. Jericho
There were those that said it will never be penetrated. But when a shout of faith was released, it began to crumble. Men have built things and structures and they have devised plans and all kinds of things. And they have even said, we've got the world where we want it. We're getting ready to overtake and we're getting ready to institute what we will. And there is nothing anyone's going to be able to do, but what they're not counting on is for somebody to begin to release a sound that is filled with faith. Do you realize today that the sound that can come up out of you can subdue kingdoms, can shut the mouths of lions. It can cause you to operate in spiritual authority in such a manner that kingdoms fall and devils flee. I wonder today, the shout that's coming up out of you, the shout that's coming out of me, is it just a shout? Is it just a religious shout? Or is it a shout filled with faith? My grandchildren, your grandchildren, your children, my children, they don't, they don't need just any shout. They don't just need a religious shout, but they need a shout of faith. So tonight, go back to the little course that simply says, Lord, if you can use anything, Lord, use me. Lord, if you, need a, if you need a vessel just to shout, listen, I don't, I don't need a doctorate to shout. I just need to have a voice. I don't, I'm not against that. But I don't need to have all of the intellect of the world. I just, Joshua wasn't asking them to do anything profound. Just simply saying, will you be obedient? And will you walk this thing out for six days? And then on the seventh day, I just want you to shout. Let's not make it any harder than it needs to be. But let's just be who God's called us to be. You don't need to be Billy Graham. You don't need to be Billy Sunday. You don't need to be D.L. Moody. You don't need to be whoever that's impacted your life. You just need to be you. Don't spend a lifetime trying to be a copycat when God says, I just need you to be an original. I just need you to shout the way I created you to shout. I wonder tonight, will we be that vessel? Will we be that people that will release a shout of faith? I want us to pray together tonight, dear Heavenly Father, before we do anything else, as we stand in your presence right now. Lord, I know it's a Sunday evening. I know there's a demanding week in front of us. I know there's responsibilities all around us. But Lord, none of those things are more important than where we find ourselves right now. Lord, today, there needs to be an awakening within the body of Christ. Such a manner where we are not just releasing any shout, but we're releasing a shout filled with faith. Today, Lord, as we stand corporately in your house, Lord, we stand knowing this, that without you, we can do nothing. But we also stand knowing this, that standing with you and you in us and us in a place of obedience and surrender to you, there is nothing that can stop or hinder that which you have ordained for this hour. And Lord, today, I sincerely believe that our best days are not behind, but that they are in front of us for those that will trust and believe in you. So tonight, Lord, we stand and we don't stand in a place 
a religious duty or obligation, but we stand in a place of gratitude and thanksgiving that we have the privilege to be in a relationship with you, the King of kings and Lord of lords. But Lord, there's none like you. You've been so kind. You've been so gracious. You've been so long-suffering. Lord, through all of our murmuring, through all of our complaining, throughout our lives, Lord, you have remained faithful. But Lord, today we, we stand before you and we know this, that we're in a world that's filled with noise. And Lord, we just don't want to add to the noise, but we want to release a shout that is filled with faith because we know that it is faith that breaks walls. We know that it's faith that brings healing. We know it's faith that brings about the stepping into the promises. So today, Lord, I pray, pray that all of us would self-examine this evening. First of all, that we would simply say, Lord, help us to be courageous. Help us to be strong and with good courage in this time of darkness, gross darkness all around us. Lord, help us not to be discouraged and overwhelmed, but Lord, we stand saying we need you tonight. But Lord, and we're willing to walk in an alliance with your word, and Lord, that which you speak, that we will follow. Lord, I pray that as we walk in that manner, that there would be an awakening, much like Paul was speaking to when he spoke to Timothy. He said, stir it up, Timothy. I know there's something in there. Lord, I pray that you would give us, give us the desire and the will to just reach down and begin to stir up the gifts that you've placed in each and every one of us. Lord, let us not remain silent, but Lord, let there begin to be a voice rise up out of us that is filled with faith. Because Lord, I believe that there is new territory that you're getting ready to give your people. There is victories that's about to be celebrated. There's there's darkness that's about to be dispelled. There's strongholds that's about to be broken. There's unexpected increase that's about to be granted because of the shout of faith that's getting ready to come up out of the body of Christ all across this globe. But Lord, we're asking for it to happen in this Whitewater Valley. Not just in this house, but every house of worship. Lord, that is preaching your word, that is standing in alliance with your word. Lord, I pray. I pray for the one that might be weary tonight, the one that might be overwhelmed, the one that might feel like it's not, it's, it's just not making a difference. But today, Lord, I pray. Lord, I pray that you would be exalted and lifted high in this season. So, Lord, today we pause. And we say, Lord, speak to us. Lord, also we pray that you would equip us afresh by your Holy Spirit. Lord, as we start a brand new week together, Lord, I pray that you would lead God and direct your people. Lord, let us not be satisfied with just going through the formalities, but Lord, let there begin to be a burning passion arise and awaken in the hearts of your people in such a manner where faith would arise and our enemy would be scattered. Lord, I pray tonight specifically for those that are defending our freedom here at home as well as abroad. Lord, I pray for our servicemen and women. Lord, that is coming alongside others. Lord, I pray that there would be fresh visitation of your Holy Spirit to touch the hearts of these young men and women. I pray that the bell of freedom would continue to ring. Lord, I pray that even though that we, as a nation, we deserve judgment, Lord, we pray like Nehemiah prayed, Father, forgive us and forgive our fathers. Forgive us for the hands that's shedding innocent blood. Forgive us for the pride and the arrogance that is 
been spewed. Forgive us for the hatred. Lord, today, we pray for a space of grace so that we could get into the harvest field and bring this last day harvest. And Lord, we know that in order to do that, there has to be a release and a sound of faith to penetrate strongholds. So today, Lord, I thank you. I thank you for what you have done. I thank you for what you're doing presently. But Lord, I thank you for what the body of Christ is getting ready to step into. So today, Lord, I pray, lead us, guide us, and direct us. Strengthen us and empower us by your Spirit. Let your hand of healing just flow over every situation, every family. Let there be physical renewal, spiritual renewal, emotional renewal, mental renewal within the body of Christ. And let this shout of faith once again penetrate and let walls begin to crumble. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. May the Lord bless you. May he keep you. May he shine. Hey everybody, it's Pastor Jade Abrams here. I just want to thank you for watching and joining with us today. We're so glad that you chose to be with us. We just encourage you to stay in contact with us. Click, follow, subscribe on all of our social media platforms to stay up to date what's happening here at PTC. We bless you in Jesus' name and we love you and so does God. Have a good day.